Hello everybody, I'm Nistorm here. Welcome back to the Horse Lord Mega Campaign in Stellaris. In the last episode, we continued our efforts at trying to expand the borders of the Empire as fast as we can. Still working on that. We also tried to destroy these asset protection unit mineral extraction operation enemies here. It didn't exactly go well. Um, we lost a bunch of ships, but we're rebuilding the fleet. So that's coming along. Uh, we were able to kind of get out to the Dressel system. I think that's already it was already taken care of. Um, we're basically pushing through here is where we were going, and we're trying to push out to this stretch. Um, we're gonna have to deal with a bunch of these other enemies at some point. I really need to get past that, but. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we've, ex you know, discovered a few more um, alien empires, including the Jahabanid Pact, who tried to do some sort of cultural exchange thing, but then tried to stab us in the back. And fortunately, we our delegation wasn't able to be used against us, but we did lose them. But um, you know, kind of did see that coming a little bit. But, you know, we tried. You know, in our history, we do know that there are times when we do need allies. So, you know, we're not going to be against forming some alliances at some point. But, you know, they're going to be solely for, you know, purposes of ensuring the Empire's continued success. So, we'll see how things continue to go. We got our destroyer classes. Um, so we now have our you know, soul class and Vladivostok class destroyers. And yeah, just continuing to work through. We got more colonies we can try to establish, but I think right now the effort is going to be grabbing outposts, just grabbing systems. Um, that's going to be the priority, as many as we can. And then, uh, we'll see how things go there. 5k. Um. So, yeah. The, the priorities are getting more star systems under our control and getting the fleet built. That's kind of where our resources are going to be dedicated primarily here moving forward and then once we've reached our maximum expansion without engaging in military conflict then we'll move on to other priorities so let's go ahead and unpause it let's get it moving xenophilic activist on bernard star prime as so people begin stepping out of the stars, many have begun to wonder, what do we do when we find other life? Well, that's a bit late to be asking that question. On Bernard Star Prime, this topic has been especially prevalent in public discourse. This is mainly due to a certain kind-hearted soul named Gaylord Bellflower. That, there's a name. Who has begun calling for systems who create to be created to ensure the fair and equitable, equitably equal treatment of aliens. This ideology is becoming highly popular among the new colonists who are enamored with the idea of Bernard Star Prime becoming a multicultural haven. They begin to call him the mediator and follow his advice, even before that of higher human authorities. He has not, to this point, used this authority to take a stance against the Empire. Indeed, he has so far cooperated well with our local authorities. But his ideas of what is best do deviate from those generally espoused by the Empire's leaders. What should we do about him? You know, we'll tolerate him for now. But I reserve the right to take other action should it prove necessary. Faction agitation's over, yep. Yeah, good to know, because uh, we did make some adjustments. To certain policies, which were fine because they don't conflict with our ultimate goals to appease some of the faction leaders. 
Alright, so that's done. Can I get another outpost built? Yes. Now one thing I could do is continue to buy alloys. So that I can continue to reinforce the fleet. Oh, there is actually one thing I wanted to do. Oh, a couple of things I wanted to mention first. And someone mentioned that I needed to research the problems on my planets, and I'm thinking they're meaning the feral overload thing. On Proxima Centauri B, I thought I had already enabled that, but apparently I hadn't. So I did start that up. So that's now running. Um, the other thing is, is I was noticing in my ship designer that one of the problems that we had was that the those asset protection units that we were fighting were primarily like heavy armor and our coil guns do a lot of shield damage but not a lot of armor damage and so And even our Null Void Beam is going to do tons of shield damage, but not a lot of armor damage. So, I think we're going to need to add in some energy weapons, some lasers, which I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to change up this design a little bit to add some lasers so that we can actually do some decent damage to armor. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's let's throw in there. Let's use a laser on the medium mount. Cause these are only gonna do like they do 3.04 average damage, but minus 50% against armor. So against armor, they're only gonna do one and a half points of damage. So maybe we should do that. Perhaps I should even start splitting the damage types on the on the Corvettes as well. Can't hurt. Oh, I can't save it because there's one being built. Alright, well that's fine. We've received a communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire. They call themselves the Bavi League. They claim to have learned of our existence by learn listening in on the communications of another empire. They are authoritarian xenophilic materialists. Okay. Greetings. I am honored to have been chosen by the chairman by Chairman Gefmar to represent the Bavi League and all diplomatic dealings with your fascinating species. We strive to unlock the full potential of technology, a goal we hope you find it... Ooh, I had a sneeze there. A goal we hope you find equally worthwhile. Alright. Where are they located? Alright, we've encountered some other type of alien vessels, the Calf Aliens. There's the Bobby League. Okay. Let's go ahead and investigate these guys. Alright, what are our science vessels doing? Not much at the moment. I think I need to clear these space amoebas. To be honest. Alright, now can I make that adjustment? Ship designer? Mm. 
No, nope, apparently we're still building stuff. Ah, yes, there's there is still one in the queue. Okay, now we're done. So now I should be able to make that adjustment to save that. Alright, and then we'll need to run the upgrade, which would be 32. Special project complete. Alright, the investigation of the strange and well behavior currently besetting Proxima Centauri B has been completed. In the vast network of cave tunnels that permeates the planet's crust, an enigmatic fungus has been found. It grows all over the caves, floor walls, ceiling, and stretches out for thousands of miles. The fungus frequently releases spores that are vented out of the caves. For what purpose has not been established, but we know for certain that it causes primitive behavior in our species, releasing primal urges within. We can try to find a useful application of this phenomenon, or we can exterminate the fungus altogether. Utilize the cave mushrooms. Or exterminate the cave mushrooms. I think this phenomenon may prove useful. Let's see what we get. Construction complete. Oh, and we've got um, an archaeological site message here. All right, steganography. This planet was home to. The home planet of the avian species, the Avis. The Avis observed 21 different primitive civilizations while maintaining the principle of non-involvement. However, as their population kept declining, they decided to enlighten one of the primitive Stone Age civilizations and incorporated them into their empire. They were the Coprians. Okay. At the end of the Avis' history, more than 90% of their population was Coprian. As the Avis' population kept on declining and the Copians kept multiplying, data gathered from a memorial stone describes the last days of the Avis. Their capital planet was surrounded by an alien empire, and getting attacked. Okay, so. What do we get? We get a whole bunch of um, minor artifacts and we get some coordinates for some Coprian hideouts. Okay. Alright, we don't need to track that anymore. Or no, we do need to track that. Okay. Alright, see if we can grab that. Oh, we need some influence. And to get the Beta Volantis. The Ix Edar star collective entered into a research agreement with the Andagon sovereignty okay we are trying to improve our relations with the Ixidar star collective construction complete all right get some mining stations some research stations and an observation post built in Dressel, though we probably are just going to conquer the people there. They're a Bronze Age civilization. But until I decide to send troops out there... Um, Alright, get some mining stations built there while we wait. Alright, so the fleet... I'm actually going to go ahead and send them after, after this. So I can get through this system. 
Well, for the purpose of continuing to work on surveys, the Underground Sovereignty has declared war on the Twaxidar Combine. Okay. They have overwhelming fleet power. Twaxidar have superior fleet power. It would be a good opportunity. But we'll see how it goes. We have other concerns right now. Than trying to take a single star system. Oh, you're stuck there, aren't you? Actually, I don't think they are. I don't have closed borders with them, so they could pass through our borders there fine. I don't know what their science ship is doing. Yeah, reinforcements in transit. I'm aware of this. An alien empire wishes to communicate. Ha! All right, so we've got the low Lo Zavada combine. Ooh, a pile of influence. Excellent. What in the world are these? They are authoritarian fanatic xenophiles. I speak on behalf on of the Lozavada Combine. There's some sort of plantoid. And I bring you greetings. Our great leader, Emperor Trunk of Kalpa Vriksha is very pleased to have made contact with your unique species. All right. Where are they? There they are. Okay, we've got a very good picture of the layout of our galactic quadrant here. Alright, so, you get over here and get that outpost built before they do. Encountered more aliens, the Samech aliens. Well, continue to uh, investigate because that um, that gets us influence, and we can get some stuff built. Um, Empire sprawl. Let's deal with that first. Let's get another administrative office going here. Uh, over here, we need to build. A city. So what I need to do, let me go ahead and just buy some uh, buy some minerals. You guys need a city. Alright, what do we have xenophile modifier? Yeah, food from jobs, agricultural districts. We need to remove some tile blockers, but it's not that important right now.
Let's see, let's get an agricultural district going here. Federation Invitation. Oh, really? We have a successfully... We are receiving a transmission from the Tilinesi Order. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Okay, so what are these? These are xenophilic pacifist spiritualists. Well met, alien. I represent the Tilinesi Order, led by the illustrious Arch Prophetess Krotug Kirvus. Okay. We rule our region of space under a divine mandate, and so as long as you do not interfere with our spiritual affairs, we look forward to team learning more about your culture. Very well. We have received the transmission from the harmonious Yibrak Commonwealth. They are xenophilic pacifist materialists. I'm delighted to offer you cordial greetings from the harmonious Yibrak Commonwealth. We have built a peaceful system of government that operates under the supervision of a council led by Councillor Kul Ong. May your great species know nothing but peace. All right, fine. We've encountered the Vivisandia Alliance of Colonies. Well, we've got all those. Uh, who are you? Greetings from the Vivisandia Alliance of Colonies. Chancellor Rhizome of Teal is our elected representative. But in truth, all citizens have a voice in our government. We strive to better ourselves through technology and the studying of alien cultures as we, uh, we encounter as we explore the galaxy. These are egalitarian xenophilic materialists. The Vivisandia Alliance of Colonies and the Bavi League have joined the Cosmic Concord. Alright, well that's a whole bunch of... That's a whole bunch there. Uh, what do we got? The Bavi League, the Harmonious Ebrak Commonwealth, and the Tilanesi Order are all there. Ooh, we're both trying. Who's gonna be first? Construction <laughs> We won. You lose. Now we just need to get past one of these so that I can start expanding down this way. Cloud and Strife. Oh, really? Industrial facilities have been built over the outlets for the fungus infested cave systems. Apart from filtering and regulating the spread of spores, these plants can also convert any excess spore clouds into useful exotic gases. The population growth is in has increased as the somewhat randy inhabitants of Proxima Centauri B satisfy the urges more frequently, which unfortunately also means that the level of violence and conflict is somewhat higher on Proxima Centauri B. That's the price of progress. Spore events. Which gives us gas plant engineered jobs, the lesser evil modifier added, which reduces happiness by 5%, but gives us plus 20% pop growth. Ends the feral overload event chain. Excellent. All right, I need to get some mines built. I need to pick a planet to be a mining planet. All right. Well, we're at at balance here on Empire Sprawl. Um, 
so I can probably go for something else. Requires... Ah, so we can't build that just yet. Uh, what do we need? We need some amenities on this planet. Uh, so I guess we'll go for some hollow theaters. Where is the fleet? There is the fleet. Construction complete. The Vivisandi Alliance of Colonies and Toxidar Combine have entered into a research agreement. They're still wary. Maybe we need to engage in some sort of um, trade negotiation? Offer them something? Hmm. I do not want to give them an active sensor link. Uh, maybe if we transferred them some food. To get anybody that they know about that we don't. There we go. Well, we got four new empires. Let's see who we've got. The Plesimus Trading Coalition. These guys are authoritarian phonetic spiritualists. Trade League. Ruthless capitalists. I bring greetings from Chairman Petals of Teal, the undisputed ruler of the Plesimus Trading Coalition. Respect our borders and keep out of our affairs. Yeah, okay. We've got the Kroll Berserkers. Oh, they look fun. Uh, fanatically xenophobic militarists. Uh. Quake and fear, alien scum, for your doom approaches. The Kroll Berserkers will cleanse this galaxy of every misbegotten Xeno civilization that pollutes it with their presence. Earth shall burn. Our sacred arm shall not waver. Alright. We are receiving transmission from the Norani Commonwealth. All right, these guys are xenophilic fanatic pacifists. I'm delighted to offer you cordial greetings from the Norani Commonwealth. We have built a peaceful system of government that operates under the supervision of a council led by coordinator Shluma. May the great species know nothing but peace. Okay. In the Mechpucks Democratic Confederacy, We've got egalitarian fanatic xenophiles. All right. Greeting from the Mechtpux Democratic Confederacy. We are a democratic nation committed to upholding the individual freedoms of our citizens, regardless of their species. I'd like to lead our president, Schnook Shash. Hopes for a long and fruitful relationship with the people. Excellent. So where are they? Okay, so there's the Norani Commonwealth. Okay. There is the Mechtpux Confederacy. And there's the Kroll Berserkers, a little bit closer than I'd like. Alright, we got a tradition. Pop growth increased by 10%. Starbase upkeep reduced. We'll take the pop growth. Offset some of our slow breeder issues. Trade deal offer. Right, they accepted it. Um, the Narani Commonwealth have closed their borders. Well, that's to be expected. 
We're gonna close our borders with these guys. Declare them a rival. Confirm. There we go. Construction complete. All right, what do we got? Oh, that's right. We can't build a mining station there. You head back here and build a mining station. You head here and build an outpost. You... Take a break, I guess. I mean, I guess I could send you there to build an outpost. You're waiting to move into th into this path once we clear that. What do we got? Research alternatives plus one and research station output plus 15%. Excellent. Physics researchers from physics research from researchers plus 20%. Weapon energy weapon damage plus 10%. You know what? We'll grab that energy weapon damage plus 10%. Alright, well, our fleet is about to arrive. Battle is joined. Well, we're having a lot more success here. Excellent. You return for repairs and then the science vessel. Hit the research projects. And then proceed on to do some surveying. Construction ship, get down here. Well, as soon as we have the influence, we'll get down there. Meanwhile, reinforce the fleet. Our first Vladivostok class destroyer is under construction. Construction complete. Scientific breakthrough achieved. Debris analyzed. Alright, we've analyzed the debris. Regenerative hull tissue plus 10% progress. Amoeba breeding program plus 10% pro progress. Society research plus 40 points. Excellent. And we got our energy weapon damage up. Point defense, oh, rate of fire, survey speed plus 25%, automatic exploration. I think we'll grab that. But it does appear to be the end of the episode, so we'll go ahead and stop here. We've got uh, contact with a lot more civilizations out there. And, yeah. We really need to get through this, but um, we're going to be limited to some extent until I can get a much larger fleet. But that's a project we're working on. But hopefully now that I can get around here, I'll be able to get down at the very least to like this system to establish a, a kind of border there, because that's a nice choke point. We'll see how it goes. But for now, we'll go ahead and stop here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.